Um, last session we ended uh, act or sell. Um, during the death of Robert, uh, the party sort of split up once they got to Dorsell, uh, deciding the party is now broken and now parting ways. Um, and since then, it's been around three years. Uh, the info on Xanthos and the Tempest Pillar have been uh, a bit quieter, but seemingly uh, a bit more darker, um, as far as uh, rumors you've heard, Kel. Um, so, Kel, can you hear me? He can hear me. Uh, I think. Try raising my. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, Kel, do you want to explain what your character has been doing these past three years? Okay. Um, rumors of Ocean's death and Verum's, uh, Verum's gone missing as well um, has also kind of broken you in a way. Um, your PTSD kind of grows more and more over these uh, last couple years. Um, and that's where we're going to continue, is after these th this three-year period. Um, Burkhar, you have managed to obtain the legendary weapon known as Dornak. Um, the gem in the very center of the blade has been dull um, for the past three years, and you've never been able to um, find out what its true capabilities were, because uh, so far it has not done anything special other than maybe add a few uh, hits and uh, usually more damage and more... Um, accuracy than a normal sword, but strangely enough, it doesn't have any unique properties. Until very recently, where inside your head you heard this voice echoing, um, and that's where you set out uh, towards this strange location that this person has talked about. Alright. Yep, alright. Uh, okay, I guess we're going to pause until he gets back. Because I was going to start off with him. So, let me do that. Alright, um, we're just going to continue with Kel for now. Um, okay, so Kel, you sit within the tavern. Um, a few people uh, kind of sitting within the tavern getting drinks. Alright, so, um, Kelly, 
as these few people kind of get drinks, wrap up their day, uh, the sky kind of gets darker and darker. Uh, you notice a very faint storm on the horizon, slowly getting closer, rolling in. What would you like to do? Um, you're currently set up in a in uh, an alleyway within two buildings. Uh, you did get permission from the uh, guards this time. Uh, so yeah, you are able to stay uh, since the three-year period. Alright, um, kind of uh, tell everyone to leave, um, they grab their drinks and head off to their homes and wherever they live. Uh, you shut the door, kind of lock it. Um, the people, uh, are still in the tavern. Uh, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the four people. The rogue, yeah, the rogue, wizard, fighter, and bartender. They're all still in there. Uh, they go to their resting spots. Uh, the wizard is kind of reading a book, kind of flipping through it with a bit of uh, mage hand. All right. So, as um, as it gets darker, what do you want to do? You hear like faint pattering. All right. Uh, as you clean, there's like this, there's this faint pattering at the window of rain, um, slowly washing the windows. Uh. You finish cleaning up uh, for the day. Uh, everyone, the lights are pretty much off by now. The candles have been turned, uh, have been snuffed. And yeah, anything you want to do? Uh, within the town. Alright. Alright. So, uh, you head to, uh, your, your sleeping area. Um, you take a bit of a uh, nap. Any Did you do any renovations to the tavern, by the way? Alright, even with the same floor, that was empty. All right. Okay. Uh, you go to your sleeping uh, place. You, you know, you set up. You go to sleep. And in the middle of the night, you hear a wind kind of echo through a window downstairs. You wake up suddenly. All right. Uh, you get out of your bed. And uh, you slowly walk down the steps. Uh, you don't have your armor on, so you can uh, you can unwield that. But um, so you slowly walk down the steps, and you notice uh, the window is open. Everyone else is still asleep somehow to that loud noise, but the window is open. Um, so you look, make a perception check. Give me zero. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, uh, suddenly this, uh, suddenly while, while you're looking around, this blackness just goes over your face. You don't know what's happening. And you just fall over, and you feel your hands slowly getting tied up, uh, and everything's black. Um, is there any way to like break out of the restraints? Is it like rope or anything, or is yeah, it more it's, like it's like a rope? You feel the rope. Uh, you can try to make a strength check. To try to rip I will. Alright, let me make a strength check to see how tight the rope is. Alright. It's a seven. Seven. Uh, you try your hardest. You can't get it. 
Mm. You hear footsteps walking around the uh, walking around the tavern. You hear the wood kind of creak as they move. Somehow the others aren't awake yet, which is really strange to you. Okay. Um. There's nothing like stopping me from yelling, though. Is there? There is not. All right, I will, you know, say, "Hey, wake up!" Anybody? The footsteps stop, and then they continue. There's actually no one waking up, which is strange. Hmm. Um. Guess I'll just uh, ask them, you know, what they want. Um, Why are they there? They don't respond, or him or her, however many people are in here, but they don't respond. <laughs> um, I'll give you some free drinks if you just let me go. <laughs> and you can check. take your pick. Make a persuasion check. Okay. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. All right. Um. They, you hear the footsteps actually get closer for a second. Um. And then they make like this noise out of their uh, mouth with the wind, and they're like, like this. Uh, like like it's tish, and then they just walk away. Uh, like they were like they were they seemed to like want it for a second somehow. Like you were that convincing, mm -hmm. um, but then they're like nah, and they walk away. Uh. Um, you hear them open something, uh, and then close it, and then open something else, close it. Eventually, they make their way around the room. Um, And then you hear the window slowly close. And it goes quiet. All right. Um, guess I'll try to break out of the restraints again. Make a strength check. Fourteen. Fourteen. Um, yep, no. Like, you <laughs> woke up like a couple minutes ago. And you are just not feeling it. You cannot rip out of these restraints. Like, ugh. yeah. All right. I uh, I'll guess I'll just try calling people, calling out again. So right. if anybody, hear me. Um, after a minute or so passes, um, that's when you hear the uh, rest of them. Are you still shouting after this? Do you, after a minute, are you still trying? Yes. All right. Um, so finally, you hear the chair croak where the rogue sits, and he walks over and he pulls the mask off. Um, and he looks at your uh, rope and he kind of rips them off. The rest of them are also now awake. <laughs> Okay. Um, did you see what happened? There were some people in here. Um, I heard something and then I, I fell back asleep. The others, the others go, uh, yeah, same thing happened to me. Hmm. Um, Let's check if anything was stolen. Stolen? Um, the bartender kind of gets up, kind of looks through the pantries. Um, let's make a perception check for him. Plus zero, I got a five. So, he looks around. Uh, it doesn't look like anything's missing. Hmm. What were they here for? All right. Um, as, uh, what, what do you want to do here? Uh, the bartender didn't find anything. Um, 
missing? Mm, no, I don't think so. Yeah, uh, he 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 literally opened like maybe two cabinets, like took like a nod into it, uh, and that's it. That's all he did for his uh, perception. Okay, uh, I'll I'll double check. All right, make a perception check, even though you're not you have negative one. <laughs> yeah. An eight. An eight. Um. You you do a better job than him. You open more than two cabinets. Um, you open a couple other cabinets, but you're not extremely familiar with the order of everything since the bartender really sets up everything every single day. He kind of yeah. changes things out, replaces it in a way that you you're not super familiar with. Um, you know where most of the things are, but most of them are randomized every single day by the bartender, so you're unable mm -hmm. to. Uh, um. But you're unable to find anything missing. All right. Well. <laughs> um. I don't know what else to do then. It is the middle of the night, so are you gonna head back to sleep? Yeah, guess I'll just go. Make sure everything's locked up tight again, you and then everything again. You up to the windows and like, uh, do you want to do anything special with there? Let's see what I have. They open inwards. Um. And outwards, so. Hmm. I'm gonna take some of the like bar stools and stuff and just sort of like prop them up against the window so it sort of like pushes them, pushes against them. All right, yeah. Sort of stops them from opening. Okay. You do that. Um, you make sure they can't be opened. Uh, and you head mm -hmm. to sleep. Now All right. we'll actually wait for Burkhard because he's just getting his computer. So we're gonna wait for that. Mm hmm. Alright, Burkhardt?
Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, right. I can. Okay, um, so, Burkhard. Um, you follow the sword's information that it gave to you uh, the previous day. Um, it's currently night time. Uh, you and Xylon are flying through the sky. Uh, it's its body kind of flying uh, through what seems to be a light storm up ahead. Um, and you continue <sighs> flying through the air. Uh, you kind of, you're holding on tight with your weapons at your side. Um, and he's making his way through the night sky. Um, <sighs> it's, it's pretty windy, so there's a lot of turbulence with uh, flying right now. Um, as, as you're going, sometimes he flies upwards uh, against a wind current, and um, you you reach uh, to a place you haven't been to in a very long time, which is what seems to be a forever stormy forest, uh, where there's always a thunderstorm happening. Um, unknown to you why, but there seems to be some sort of everlasting thunderstorm uh, at the same time the plant growth around this area is also uh, so vivid that it's hard to move so you're taking um, so you're taking uh, Xylon through the forest flying and up front, uh, you go through the clouds which is kind of dangerous during a thunderstorm but you do it anyways you fly downwards through the um, through the clouds and you and you see what seems to be a single oak tree within this huge forest uh, is this singular oak tree. Um, and to you and uh, whatever memories the sword gave you, it seems like that is the place to go. What do you want to do? Uh, I think I am gonna go and inspect that tree. All right. Just, I don't know, I guess look at it and see if there's anything weird about it. I'm rolling, am I rolling at all or? Great. Right. All right. So as Xylon makes his way through the uh, through uh, through the forest, makes his way passing all the trees, going through the leaves and branches, and finally you land to where the oak tree is, uh, which seems to be a very large black soiled uh, clearing with a singular oak tree. Um, you notice multiple animal skulls kind of scattered throughout this oak tree. Um, you notice a cross, and you notice a vase with multiple amulets strung upon the vase itself. The vase itself has symbols kind of scattered around the per perimeter of it, and um, you notice a cane kind of placed next to the tree. The eye of Dornak starts glowing this red color. What do you want to do? Uh, I guess I could probably find out what is causing the skim scimitar to glow. As you grab the scimitar uh, with your left hand, uh, the eye, the center eye, glowing red, starts glowing vividly into your eyes, and suddenly everything turns red. Um, you see a singular white slit in front of you. 
as a strange, otherworldly voice starts echoing. Take the vase. Bring it to its owners. And this voice continues onwards until it's this high-pitched frequency kind of echoing through your ears. Uh, you feel a little bit of blood kind of flowing from your right ear, kind of dripping down your face before it suddenly stops. And everything turns back to the vivid green it was before. Uh, you then remember something. Um, the last time you were here, you you uh, flew by this uh, group of adventurers um, who got stuck within a pit hole. Um, and you, you helped them out. Uh, they seem to have a similar base to this. Uh, specifically, a human uh, had a very similar base to this. Uh, and you remember one more one more thing you remember is uh, there was a half orc with the group, uh, which seemed to resemble a uh, popular tavern owner within Garnch, which is a local uh, town uh, that you, you you kind of got acquainted over the past three years. Uh, he runs a tavern within Garnch, so. You, you, what do you want to do? The vase is in front of you. And, yeah. Uh, I guess I take the vase and try and track down the adventurers who had a similar one. All right. You, uh, you get off the, uh, the hippogriff. You walk up to the vase. Uh, you pick it up. Where do you want to put it? Uh... I don't know. I guess I could put it in my backpack or, or somehow hang it off the hippogriff. All right. Uh, does the hippogriff have like a satchel or something? You could probably put it in one if you if it has one. Yeah, I could probably use a bit of the rope that I have to. Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, say we'll yeah, say over the past few years you probably built some sort of satchel for it, right? Yeah, we can say that. All right. Um, you take the uh, vase, you kind of put it in the hippogriff satchel. Uh, you close it tightly. And what do you do? Uh, well, I guess I can try and find this tavern that one of the adventurers found or is running. All right. You hop onto the hippogriff, um, and you suddenly, it, st it starts uh, revving up, and it starts running, it takes its wings, expands, <laughs> and flies upwards, suddenly, <laughs> right with uh, the air currents that's kind of going through the forest, it goes upwards, um, it attempts to pass through the storm clouds, make a dexterity check, or make a dexterity saving throw, actually. As a lightning bolt okay. suddenly smashes through the clouds, um, charging right into, almost, like, almost right next to you guys. Okay, give me a sec. Okay, eight. Eight in total. Eight total. All right. Well, let me roll this then. 10, 18 damage to both you and the Hippogriff as the lightning strike suddenly hits its wing, <clears throat> jolting both of you. Okay. Would I do that wing. damage <clears throat> here? Um, what, what are you trying to do? You're trying to uh, change HP? I can update the damage on the character thing right yeah um okay i am playing. the damage is on the top right uh but the damage for the hippogriff should be uh in its own place within extras yeah i damaged them all right cool 18 damage um he's he's not dead right 
Yeah, he's got one hit point, though. Oh, he's got one hit point? Okay. Yeah. Um, its wing is almost completely burnt, but it actually still manages to fly forward, um, trying to get you both of you out of there. Um, you fly for a couple miles before it has to take a rest. Um, you do manage to get out of the... Uh, do manage to get out of the uh, thunderstorm area. Um, it takes a quick rest uh, to rest its wings for a bit. Um, so we can do. Do you want to do a short rest or a long rest right here? Um, either one is. Uh, I could. I should probably do a long rest. All right. Sounds considering good. damage I'm taking. Right. Lightning. Uh, uh, so both of you slowly uh, kind of set up camp. Uh, rest for a bit, uh, around eight hours of rest, and you wake up the next morning. It is sunny. Uh, there's no more thunderstorms. What do you want to do? Uh, I guess we can continue on our way. All right. Um, you walk up to the hippogriff. Uh, you kind of pat it. Its wing is healed fully now. Um, strangely enough, that's how. They have a more very healing ability than most creatures. Uh, you get onto the top of the hippogriff. Uh, you grab the reins, and it goes flying upwards. <laughs> um, as the uh, as the hippogriff continues flying for a couple of miles towards uh, what you remember is Garnch. Um, continue onwards. <laughs> And you finally see a couple of hills, and at the very edge of the hills, you notice a city. Um, which presumably is the city of Garch. Uh, as the hippogriff lands, it kind of grasps onto the ground. Uh, the uh, soil kind of a bit is, is a bit soft, but he, he does manage to make uh, try. To, he does manage to land correctly. And you are within Garch. What do you want to do? Uh, I guess I can look for the tavern. And before we continue, I just have a question. So when I had taken the long rest, I clicked the long rest button on this character thing. But I then it says like it recovers hit points. But I don't think I did at all. Uh, well, you took 18 damage. So all of that is restored. During a long rest. Yeah, but on the character sheet, I'd click long rest and like confirm or whatever, and it hasn't uh, restored it on the sheet. I don't know if I have to do that oh. myself. Uh, it should do it automatically. Um, let me double check that. I'll do try, it one more time. Try doing it again. Try doing it again, real quick. Okay, I'll do it one more time. I got you. Yeah, it just worked for me, so. Yeah, I could try doing it on my computer. I'm doing it. I have Discord on my computer, and then this on my iPad, so I can yeah. try and on my yeah. computer, see if that works better. Yeah, on my side, it doesn't show that either, so for your character specifically. Um, I can try doing a long rest for you if you want that. Yeah, um, sure. But, all right. And then with the hippogriff heal with that? Uh, yeah, just two, to cover or... all of his hit points. Just to add 18 hit points. Okay. Alright. Um, make an investigation. Uh, you aren't super familiar with Garch. Uh, so you're going to try to find this tavern. Mm-hmm. Did the long rest work, by the way? Uh, it did for me. Okay, maybe I should try reloading my... tab. Okay, yeah, it worked. I think I just have to reload it. I'm just going to use it on my computer from now on.
So, make your investigation check. You are trying to find Kel and his tavern. All right. Um, as, uh, what, what did you get, sir? For investigation. Oh, investigation. I did not hear that. All right. Okay. Uh, no, one sec. I gotta. Uh... Okay, investigation, a total of 19. 19, all right. Um, you, you easily find it, uh, strangely yeah. enough. You walk down the street, you look around, and you see a tavern-looking place uh, stuffed between two buildings. Um, you walk up to it, you notice chairs kind of bumped up against the windows um, and a central door. Um, as you walk um, into the tavern, um, you notice a bartender, uh, a few people within this tavern, and you notice a half-orc kind of walking around, kind of asking people, uh, you know, their orders, their drinks, that kind of stuff. What do you want to do? Uh, I guess try and find the person who I yeah. had originally met. Uh, Kel is actually sta he, he's the person kind of walking around the half work. Okay, so then I guess uh, approach him and ask him about the, the vase and whatnot. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so Kel, uh, this human kind of walks <laughs> up to you um Where's your hippogriff, by the way, Burkhardt? Sorry. Are you asking me a question? Yeah, where where's your hippogriff? Uh I guess it's just waiting outside. Alright. So Kel, you notice the hippogriff actually like standing outside. Um its beaks and claws and hooves are all this dark orange color, this deep orange color, and the very edge feathers, at the at, at the feathers at the very edge of his its wings, are uh, this orange color. Um, in contrast, in contrast, the rest of his body is uh, pretty much completely black feathers, um, including <laughs> the horse part. So, um, so 
what do you want to say? Uh, Foxy. Burgard? Uh, I don't know if Kel said anything. I didn't hear him. Okay, but but you walk up to him. What do you want to say? Uh. I guess. Just like. Hi. And just introduce myself. All right. What does your character look like? Uh, give me a sec. I got to pull up the. Uh, uh, sorry. He is, uh, six foot two. Male, brown hair, uh, darker tan skin, blue eyes. I guess just kind of, I don't know, you would call it like bulky, maybe a little bit less than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this person walks up to you, Kel. Uh, what do you want to do, Kel? Um... Just sort of, you know, size them up, I guess, and just, you know, say, you know, what what brings you here? Are you in here for a drink, maybe? Uh, some food? Oh, do I respond to that, then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I am... Here to ask you about a vase you may have had a couple of years ago. Uh, a vase? Um, what what kind of vase? Uh, it would be something with symbols, maybe some... Would it be like relics in it? And then... If you're still confused, I can go get one that I have. Uh, Kel will sort of like kind of remember back, and uh, yeah. no, uh, I I think you have the wrong pe person. Um, probably best you go. Uh, I Burgard is going to say that. Remember three years ago when you were stuck in that sinkhole and being attacked by the elemental? I was the one on the hippogriff who came and helped rescue you. It was a long time ago. His days are over now. I don't think I'd have any use with that face. Do you know where you would have... Put it or stored it. No. Um, Burkhard, as you look around, you notice uh, something at the back table where the bartender is. You notice a symbol. Um, and this symbol is reminiscent of the symbol uh, upon, you notice one of the people that tied you up had a very similar symbol on one of their gloves. And it's written in the very corner of this, uh, of this uh, back table. What do you want okay, to Okay, I guess I ask, I ask about what that symbol is. 
the uh, I don't know what symbol you're talking about. This one over here, as Burgard points into or at where the symbol is. Okay, Shakel's going to look over. All right, so Kel, this symbol you've never seen before. You walked past this place millions of times. This symbol wasn't there before. I've never seen that before. He sort of walks over and, you know, inspects it, I guess. Sort of examines it. It seems to be uh, a horse with a crown on the very top. All right. So, what do you guys want to do? Uh, I mean, I guess we could take a closer look in what at this symbol. Like in what way? Uh, um, maybe, maybe feel it if it's like some sort of, well, if it's like engraved or painted, and then I could tell Kel what that symbol means to me about the people who tell me. Place your fingers upon the symbol, kind of tracing it, uh, kind of feeling it around, um, checking. And you notice uh, this dust within, like, within the cracks of the symbol. Um, it seems to be this blue dust, specifically, coming from, like, once you once you take your hands off, this blue powder is now on your hands, staining it. Uh, so, make a history check. History, you said? Yeah. Total of 21. 21, all right. Give me a quick second. All right. Um, this specific uh, blue dust, I uh, both of you actually recognize this. Um, it's very reminiscent uh, of a sand. Uh, it seems to be actually sand that's been grinded down to further than normal sand. Um, but sand located uh, near the river south of Garch, and I'll send you guys a screenshot of Garch. Uh, of, yeah. Um, but it's, it definitely seems to be uh, similar sands to that river. I sent it in general. Uh, you can you can see Garnch, and right below it is uh, the river. Okay. Okay. Um, you you take a quick whiff of it, and you get the smell of what seems to be uh the uh what seems to be the sea. Uh, you take like two whiffs of it. Uh, it seems to smell of, you know, the, like the shore of, um, 
of any ocean. It smells, uh, you can smell like, like, uh, sea, you can smell the sea, you can smell the salt water within it. Um, so you're assuming it's, you're assuming wherever the sand came from, it's definitely along this river, uh, most likely next to the ocean. All right. All right. Do you want to tell Kel this? Uh, yep. All right. You can tell. Yeah. So this symbol, I assume it's about the symbol, right? Yeah. This, okay, so this symbol was actually on the, what was it, hand or arm? What, like, uh, how, what was it on for one of the people? Like, on their hand or clothing or... So, Kel, knowing this information... What do you, what would you like to do? Uh, I don't know. Just um, nothing really. All right. You know why are you bringing this? You know to me. What do I have to do with this? The sword in your uh right side where card starts glowing specifically the eye uh not to the point where it's it's glowing like this bright red light it's just uh the gem itself is glowing uh i guess i told kel this because the sword either wanted me to or wants him to come along um, to simply explore where the sand came from. Kel, you look at the sword, and it seems to be almost exactly how Varum described it. It's a dark sword, uh, not a long sword. This time it's a scimitar. Um, it's a curved blade with, uh, in the hilt, is a single red eye made of a gem. Okay, um, Kel's gonna sort of, like, kneel down and, uh, sort of look at the sword while it's, like, you know, on his side. Kel, um, everything starts turning red. As, um, as you look around, you see a singular white slit appear within the room, and you notice this, uh, voice echoing throughout the room. Everything else seemed almost frozen to you. <laughs> Your friends are dead. And soon, everything will be dead. And uh, it slowly starts getting louder and louder as it echoes between the two walls. Um, the sound doesn't go away, it just continues in your head uh, to the point where it's screeching. And <clears throat> you uh, you suddenly get this really bad headache from this noise before all the redness goes away and the sound fades. So he's over here just like holding his ears, you know, all right. waiting for this sound to go away. So finally, it stops. Berghard, um, Kel kind of pulls his hands off the ears. You recognize it as the same state you were in, 
uh, when the uh, when the voice talked to you as well. Uh, I guess I would say to Cal, it happened to you too. Yeah, but what was that? I am not entirely sure. It happened to me at the tree where I got the vase I was talking to you about. Kel, uh, the bringing up of the tree uh, brings you to the day Robert died, where they planted the oak tree. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, upon that, Kel's just gonna sort of, like, you know, walk over to the, the bar and just, like, pour himself a drink. Alright. <laughs> upon remembering. Alright. Um, you, you pour the drink, uh, you take a quick drink. You, uh, as you drink... The memories of the cadaver collector start almost coming back for a second. Remember, um, it's stalking you every night for the past couple years, um, trying to get you, luring you to attack it. Um, but you always manage to resist, uh, knowing that Ocean and Verum died to it is uh, a bit hardening right now, but you managed to drink it off. Cool. So you get your drink. What do you want to do? All this happened just so long ago. I I don't think we should be bringing it back now. I think we can at least go to where this sand came from and see if this will be a solution to our problems. All right. Just one trip, and then I'm done. Um, Kel, uh, so we are going to wherever that sand came from. So um, here's what we're going to do. Uh, what is your method of traveling? The hippogriff, I assume. Hippogriff? Alright. Yeah. Okay, uh, so it can handle up to, uh, Two times. Okay, how much do you both weigh? I weigh 200 pounds. Um, let's see. I forgot cows. Uh, 170, right. almost 180. Almost 180. Okay, well, that is definitely under 510, which is how much the uh, hippogriff can carry. So, uh, you are both able to mount it. Uh, the trip to, um, uh, trip to, uh, and where is that? Chipstead, right? Yeah, all right, just a bit north of, on the cliff sides of, uh, Chipstead. Um, your, uh, you both ride the hippogriff and actually manages to carry both of you. As it starts flying upwards, Kel, you suddenly get really scared of heights before it starts taking off. It revs up <clears throat> and starts going off. So, Kel, you look downward mm -hmm. and you notice the city of Garnch getting smaller and smaller away. Uh, 
are you taking the tavern though? Is the question. No, I'm not. Okay. Um, you get on the grip. You take your weapons though, and you get on, and it flies upwards. The city of Garnch slowly getting smaller and smaller as you reach cloud height, and it's flying rapidly through the air. Um, we're just gonna skip this time. Um, to get to Shipstead. Uh, after around two days of travel, um, you guys camp a bit during that time, uh, kind of setting up campfires throughout the prairies and the forests uh, between Garnch and uh, Shipstead. And the Hippogriff is finally, with its eyes, notices a, uh, a large port city. And it slowly goes towards it. Slowly landing doof, right onto the cliff sides. Um, a, a very rocky cliffside, uh, which stands up on an edge towards the ocean, and the uh, the city of Shipstead to your left. Okay. All right. Okay, we can probably land in Shipstead. All right. Uh, you guys land within Shipstead um, in the market area. People are, like, looking at you guys as you just randomly land within the city. Uh, you both get off. Um, they are kind of following you guys. Where do you guys want to go? Good. Well... I don't know. We should probably go somewhere where we can ask about the sand. Be the... So maybe a local tavern or something. Yeah, like a tavern or strong. All right. Um. So, as you guys can make your way down the uh, road, uh, the main street, anyways, uh, you go uh, to the west, which is where the dock side is. Um. Yet, to get to uh, get to where the wood is placed for the dock. Um. You notice uh, nearly a hundred ships are like landed. Um, some of them going fishing, some of them here for travel. You notice actually a couple people leaving a boat, which seems to be travelers. Um, they all have very fancy um, wear to get on the boat. And you notice uh, the water splash onto side right uh, right under your feet the waves can crash on the uh, dock and slow uh, bowl their way towards you guys. Uh, some of them get under the loose but the main thing you notice for is kind of the sand rolling with the waves. You notice the same sand. will pick up the sand and sort of um, compare it to the sand and the symbol. Alright, um, the sand within the symbol uh, was a bit more fine, like as it was, as it, mm -hmm. as if it was graded, in a way. Yeah. Um, 
So this must be the place. Uh, what do you guys want? Uh, there is a dock side filled with people. And Cal, what exactly are you trying to find out here? What is your objective? Um... I don't know, I guess I'm trying to find out sort of who made this thing, why they made it. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, just in case, uh, so, so, the, so yeah, so this symbol was placed there during when you were uh, mm -hmm. in Captain. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. There is, so, have you guys traveled to Dockside, what do you guys want to do? I guess we can go to that dock, dock and maybe cast around. Alright. Uh, Burkhardt, what is your objective? <laughs> Sorry, you cut up. What is your objective to do? What, what, are, you, what are you trying to accomplish? Uh, to, to find this, why are you trying to basically? Why are you trying to find this sand? Since I recognize that symbol and the sand was in that symbol, okay. I guess I am going to find who made the sand and ask him about the symbol and maybe the people as well. Okay, that's okay. So um, Kel, uh, as you, so you said you're asking people around, or one of you said that, right? Um, let me get my dice. So, uh, go ahead and make an investigation check, whoever is, uh, doing that. I have a plus zero to investigation, so. Yeah, I, I have plus three. Okay, so. you, you go for it. Okay. Um, can uh, I help 20... with that action? Uh, the way I'm ruling it from now on is you can't help someone unless you both have proficiency. Oh, uh, okay. So you can't... Okay. Sorry, what did you say? I didn't so hear you. both people have to have proficiency in order to help, because it doesn't really make sense if you have, like, okay. one. Um, right, okay. And then you also are helping someone do with something, so... That's the way I'm going to get from here. Uh, makes sense. Okay. And right, Burkhardt, what did you get? Sorry, could you repeat that? My audio put out. Uh, investigation check. You're trying to find someone who would know about this. Oh, also, okay, what so question I do... are you trying to find here, by the way, guys? Uh, make your investigation check, though. But what, what, what is the uh, question you were asking? Do you know where someone could refine sand? I don't know. Okay. Where do you know where would refine okay. sand? Kelly, you have any ideas? Um, if they've seen the symbol before. Alright, so two questions. Okay. Make your investigation check, uh, Berghard. Okay. Uh, it's a ten in total, but without the three would be seven. A ten of total. Um, okay. um, uh, I'll be right back. I have to go do something really quick. Alright. Um, so, Kel, uh, both are kind of asking questions. Uh, you guys don't get too much information. Um, for the first question, um, you do find an answer. Uh, somewhat good refined sand. So you go through this very old dock worker. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. it's still is kind of rot very it's, it's pretty high right now. I mean, the waves are also pretty big and pretty high over right here. Uh kind of splashing on this we should be finding old older dog bunker. Uh very cool here Um well someone I suppose someone could uh find could refine some uh what do you think grinding wheel or some sort of Grain mix. I don't understand why someone would do that, though. Hmm. So where would one of those uh, wheels be? Um. Well, any major farm has them, or you know, pretty much anywhere you could find some sort of grind wheel. Uh, but there's uh, specifically around here, we don't have too many farmers except on the outskirts. Um, let me roll here. There's a 14 plus 2, so 16. Um, uh, well, I believe the lighthouse has a grind wheel, if I recall. Alright, thanks. No problem. Uh, just let you guys know, I have to go for like five minutes, five or ten minutes. All right. We can take a break if you want. Yeah, say that. All right. Uh, so as you guys travel to the White uh, Lighthouse, we are going to take a break. Mm-hmm. All right.